Hello everyone and welcome to your midweek assembly. So our assembly this week is on Charles Dickens. As you can see, we're going to be looking at the history of Charles Dickens and why he is remembered and why he is still well known, especially around our local area. And after all, our school is Art Dickens. So I think we all should learn a little bit more about the man himself. So, if it works. So we've got, who is Charles Dickens? So who is he? Charles Dickens was born in Landport, Portsmouth, the 7th of February, 1812, okay? So he was only born just down the road. Some of you, if you looked at our where it's a PE team, we was actually outside of his birthplace. And I think it's about a six minute walk from school. He was, he was a successful writer. He had 10 children. He wrote the first Christmas book in just six weeks. So he actually created the almost like the Christmas genre of uh, books. So you will find out a little bit later in the assembly uh, what the book was titled, but can you guess what it's called now? And our school is named after him. Again, that's a pretty big thing, especially if we don't know too much about him. It's a pretty big thing. Why is Charles Dickens so relative to us? So if he died over, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, why is he still so relevant? Why are we still talking about him? Why am I stood here doing an assembly about him? So, he was a very talented writer, so much so his work is still actually used and adapted today. So when I say adapted, I mean his work, which he originally produced, is now still being put into films, or people are still rewriting his books and kind of just changing it a little bit. That's what adapting means. So he was born 0.3 miles away from our school. And as you can say here, this is why we are Art Dickens. So his early life, so going back to when Art Dickens was a child. So he was born in Portsmouth, but he did leave at a fairly young age. His schooling was interrupted and unimpressive and it ended at 15. He became a clerk in a solicitor's office, then a shorthand reporter in the law courts. So here is very interesting. So his schooling was interruptive and unimpressive. So that tells me that you know what he, although how talented he was, at school he had a little bit of a rough time. It wasn't all so easy. Everything didn't come easy to Charles Dickens. In 1824, the family reached bottom. So Charles had been left, had been withdrawn from school and his father went to prison for debt. So his, his father actually ended up in prison and Charles Dickens himself actually had to get taken out of school. So he had to get taken out of school because he had to help provide for the family. So he had to come out of school, go and work at a very young age when he still should have been at school just to help his family with some money so they could afford a house, so they could afford food, to put food on the table. After experiencing the transition from middle class to the working class, he began to gain that sympathetic knowledge of, his, of its life and difficulties that informed his writing. So a lot of what that means is that what's happened in his life, he's actually put into his stories and it's motivated him to write about. So in some of his stories, I won't name what they are just yet, but you might be able to resemble something where a child finds it really tough and they're trying to make something of their self or they're a part of a family with not a lot of money or they're a very grumpy person. And that refers back to his life. So remember here, this is so important. His schooling was difficult. He didn't have it easy. And if you think to how far he's got and how much he's remembered so late on, it, it's pretty remarkable. So we've looked at his early life, we're gonna look at his early work now. So, in 1833, he began contributing stories and essays to magazines and newspapers. So that was his early work. He started kind of putting some of his work into newspapers and magazines to kind of get his name out there. In 1836, the Pickwick Papers released and Charles Dickens quickly became the most popular author of that time. In 1836, he also wrote two plays. So you can see it's a quick transition from 1833 and 1836, he was doing a lot of work and that's really kind of raised the profile of who he is today. So in 1837, Dickens released the first part 
of Oliver Twist. So I'm sure all of you know Oliver Twist. Again, that's been made into a film. There's even newer books out of Oliver Twist as well. And that is from 1837. So most of these novels were initially written in a monthly, weekly, or infrequent instalments. Sometimes this would be on a subscription basis. So that means essentially you'd have to pay. So you'd have to pay for almost part one. Then you'd have to pay for part two then part three, and then only when all they, they were released could you buy the whole book form. So you'd have to potentially, for example, buy the first 10 chapters, then the middle 10 chapters, and then the final 10 chapters, and then after they were all released individually, the whole um, book would be released. So that, I guess that's how he built up suspense, and how, and how he made money as well. So what is his most famous work? So, as I've already said, Oliver Twist. That is huge, isn't it? We all still know Oliver. In schools, we still read about Oliver. I've seen Oliver as a kid, and you still see it on TV today, Oliver. And that is from Charles Dickens' work. You just think he was around the corner from us where he was born. And he, we are still watching some of his work to this day. So, Oliver Twist was Dickens' first novel and he began publishing instalments in February 1837 and April 1838, with the full book edition published in November 1938. So you look at that, and that's almost a, that's about a year and a half between when they, the first instalment came out and the final book. So again, it builds up that suspense. Imagine reading something. It's almost when you watch a film these days. You watch a film, and it leaves on a cliffhanger and you're waiting for the next film to come out maybe the next year and it builds up that excitement and that suspense to kind of what's going to happen next a christmas carol so earlier i said to you what uh, was wrote in six weeks and that was the christmas carol and that was the first christmas book and he wrote that in six weeks and you still hear that today you still get that film played today and again there have been adaptations you might have seen uh, a Muppets version of it, so a Muppets Christmas Carol. And you think that work was written in six weeks and it's still played today. And you think that that is remarkable. So famous characters here, just a little bit of a quiz. So I'm going to give you about 20 seconds just to have a little look whilst I speak about his famous characters. Can you link up to what they are? So we have Ebenezer Scrooge, we have Tiny Tim, we have Artful Dodger and we have Oliver Twist. So by now, you should have been able to maybe establish where number one, number two, number three, and number four go. You can let us know on Seesaw what ones you went for. What can we take from Charles Dickens himself? So, as I've already said, he struggled in school. He had lots of interruptions. His family life wasn't great, but he still made it because he was dedicated to writing. That was his passion. And it shows no matter of what you go through all the hard times you, you know what if you put your mind to it and work hard you can get where you want to get to dickens had to leave school at 12 to get a job so this is what i referred to earlier his dad was sent to prison and charles dickens was only 12 years old so that is some of our year six pupils that's them next year having to leave school to go get a job and work full time you're taken out of education and that is and that is huge you think how much you miss out on but he didn't give up, he carried on. What, he carried on doing what he loved and, and look where he is, he's still remembered to this day. And you can see here, it is just about believing in yourself, okay? That's what it's about. It's almost a bit of an inspiration, isn't he? Um, you look at him and you think, wow, he went through all that, he had all that trouble, he didn't have it all handed to him on a plate. He had to really work for kind of what he's got and his legacy that he's left behind. And it does really show, no matter what you're interested in, if you put your mind to it, no matter what happens, you can get there. You can get there with hard work. And here I've just put up some of his favourite, famous work. You see, you've got The Christmas Carol, you've got uh, David Copperfield there, uh, A Tale of Two Cities, and Oliver Ooh. Twist down there. And it's just to have a little look, just to see if you've read any of these books, if some of these books are something you're interested in, if you can recognise any films on there. And again, it's just to appreciate some of the fantastic work that um, Charles Dickens has done. And again, he's almost a local hero. He was born a six minute walk away, 0 0.3 miles, I think it was. And you go to a school which is named after him and right around the corner from his birthplace. And I think, that, I think that's pretty 
pretty incredible. I think the main the main thing to take from this is kind of how he done what he has done. So he has put in so much work and he's left behind such a legacy that had such a difficult upbringing. Like I just want you all to remember, no matter what you want to achieve, you can do it with dedication and hard work. I hope you found this interesting. I hope you learned something and I look forward to seeing you all. Hello guys, hope you're all doing well. So this week's on here, where is the PE team? We are somewhere in Portsmouth and your clue is it is an artillery fort which was constructed by Henry VIII in 1544 to defend against the French and the Roman Empire. Type in to see where you think we are. Over to you.